All right, uh, the second one we're going to talk about here, uh, Kip, is telling me what you think I want to hear. Now, this is one that really drives me crazy, and I hear it all the time in interviews, right? Um, really, when it comes down to it, I don't want you to make stuff up if you don't know the answer during the interview, right? If I ask you a question that's really technical and in-depth, and maybe you're not really smart on that particular tool or that particular thing, don't start BSing me and just filling me full of hot wind, right? Instead, you should actually do something else. And what should they do, Kip? If I asked you a question, you don't know the answer to the interview, what would you do? Okay, so a, a candidate with high integrity and high confidence is going to say to me, point blank, I don't know that. And then they're going to follow it up with this. Would it be okay if I figure it out after we finish the interview and then I follow up with you? Oh my gosh. When a candidate does that, I'm super impressed. It, again, it shows integrity and it shows confidence. And I need both of those attributes uh, you know, by the basket full. Yeah, I actually uh, was just hiring for a position in my company for a new chief technical officer. It's a new position we created as we're growing. We decided we needed somebody who was really focused on the technical side because up to this point, I was doing the CEO job, I was doing the COO job, I was doing the CTO job, all combined into one. I've noticed. Last year, I hired a COO <laughs> and she's been doing great. And I said, you know what? It's time for me to offload this technical side too. Can I do it? Sure. Am I smart at it? Yeah but I can't do that and be an instructor and be the CEO and do everything else that I do. So I decided I was going to hire somebody. And during the interviews, I found somebody who I really liked and I asked them a question. And when I asked the question, they did this exact thing, right? They didn't fill me full of BS. I asked a question about AWS because that's what our infrastructure is built on. And he told me flat out, he goes, my experience in the past has been on Azure. So I don't know the exact answer of how I would do that in AWS, but I know I can figure it out for you. And if you give me 24 hours, I'll come back with you with an answer to that particular question. Perfectly fine. Because I'll tell you, as a CTO, I don't need an answer within 30 seconds if I ask you something, but I do need it this week. And so he went off, he found the answer. He said, yeah, in Azure, we do it this way. In AWS, it's the equivalent of this thing. And that was it. And now he is hired on the team. He actually started this Monday or last Monday, uh, and he's doing a great job for us. But again, he's not an AWS expert, but he's learning and he's bringing it yeah. up to speed because he already had equivalent experience that he was able to uh, use. Yeah. And again, not trying to blow smoke and say, oh yeah, yeah, right. it's this, 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 and this, because that might've worked and, and he probably would've gotten that past my COO because she's not technical, but he wasn't getting it past me because I know AWS, right? right? And so that's a difference there. Yeah, I also want to tack on one other thought here, which is uh, not only are you showing integrity and confidence, but you're actually displaying another really key skill, which is you'll never know everything. You'll never be able to solve every problem that comes at you. And I don't want you BSing your way through really important problems that show up unexpectedly. I want you to pause. I want you to do the research. I want you to reach out for help and I want you to figure it out. And you know, again, that, that's just like a key skill that we need to have on my team. Yeah, the next one is one that just drives me nuts, but I'm gonna let you cover it, Kip. What's number three? <laughs> yeah, number three is telling me that you've got either certifications, or experience that you really don't have, or telling me that you've attended certain trainings that you haven't actually gone to. And um, oh, I, know, I know why a lot of people do this. They're nervous. Again, they want to impress. They want the job. And so they figure, well, I'll just fudge this, right? Because it's just a short interview. There's no way that, you know, this, that this stuff can be sorted out in the interview. And you're right. In the interview, I probably am not going to know this, even though, um, you know, if I suspect that you're, that you're not telling me the truth, you know, I could start asking you some pointed questions and maybe, you know, and maybe figure out that you don't know it. But listen, the bottom line here is don't lie. It, that creates an integrity problem, which, I, which we've mentioned is, uh, is completely unacceptable. If I can't trust you, you're gone off my team. And it doesn't matter if it's a small I can't trust you or a big I can't trust you. So don't start off on this, uh, uh, you know, don't start off this way with lies or even exaggerating the truth. That may be okay in, a mar in marketing, but it's not okay in the information security and cybersecurity world because you know what's going to happen is you're going to tell me this and then I'm going to go do the background check, right? So I'm hiring, I found a person that I want to hire for my team right now. And I am really, really like uh, anxious to pull the trigger, but I'm doing a background check on this person because I don't know who they are. I've never met them before. There's nobody that I know who knows them. And so for, you know, to protect my company, to protect my customers, I'm running a background check. Well, guess what? I'm, I'm going to do that 
whether it's a formal background check or whether I'm going to just like talk to your prior supervisor, right? And I'm going to find out if you've done these things. And if you've gone to these trainings uh, or if you have these certifications, it's very, very easy for me to discover. So you may, you may, you may think that, you, uh, you know, that you're going to get away with something, but you're not. So Jason, what would you rather see a candidate do when they feel like, you know, they're missing a certain certification or a certain uh, experience. Yeah, I, I think this is really an easy one, right? Don't lie to me. Uh, be honest. List the certifications and experience that you have that are relevant to that position. Um, this is one that I talk about all the time because, you know, I look at my own resume and I've got 30 something certifications. Now, do I think you need 30 something certifications? Absolutely not. Um, I think you need three to five key certifications. Now, if you have 10, 20, 30 certifications, that's fine. But what I would do is only list the ones that are relevant to the position you're going for. If you're trying to go and become a cybersecurity analyst, don't tell me about the fact that you have an A plus certification. I really couldn't care less. I care that you have security plus, uh, CYSA plus, maybe pen test plus or CEH or CISSP or something like that. Something in that security realm. It'll and so be in the job the description. Relevant. Exactly. And it's going to be based on the job description and you're going to make sure that it's matching those keywords.